What does successful diversity in the workplace look like? Well, there's some local businesses already doing this, and I got to sit down and chat with a few of these community champions. I think you'll enjoy hearing and seeing what actually makes them inclusive workplace champions. Hi, my name is Tony McNeil, and I'm excited to be in Ashburton today to interview Tony Corbett, who owns Subway Ashburton. We're in the Ashburton district, showcasing welcoming and inclusive behaviours in the workplace. I guess you've driven past Subway, you've even ordered a Subway sandwich, and you'll know about the diversity of ingredients that make up your lunch. But have you ever wondered about the diversity of the people who make your lunch for you? Let's go check it out. Tony, Tony, how are you? How are you? I'm well, thank you. Hey, Two Tonys, who would believe it? Right? Indeed, we can't get our names wrong, we'll be all good. So Tony, thanks so much for having us here. Tell us a little bit about why Subway. Um, I was a farmer, farmer for 30 years. Um, we got to the point with farming where um, I was spending all my time on farm. My wife was working in town, the kids were all in town. So we made the decision, it was 10 years ago in November actually, that we sold the farm. And um, you know, went through that midlife crisis thing, what the hell am I going to do now? You know, I'm, Jack of all trades, a master of none. And then there was a little wee ad in the local paper. It said, because um, you're not allowed to say Subway for sale, it had fast food business, I think, in Ashburton CBD. So I followed that up and I thought, well, I can probably do this. I think the store was op opened in 2003, I think, was when it first opened. You know, it, it, it's a great business, so different to farming, you know, like um, big difference, which farmers will laugh at, which is something I couldn't get over in the first week was we, you know, we actually produce a product here, and a minute later somebody pays you for it. You know, when you're farming, you produce something, and 18 months later you may you may get paid for it. So that, that was a huge yeah, difference. Yeah. One of the analogies we made earlier was the diversity of ingredients that make up a Subway sandwich. And I guess, as an employer, you now have a diverse workforce. What does that mean for you? What does it look like on a day-to-day -day basis? We often call it the United Nations. Of you know, when you look along look along the line, there's a real mix of of all ethnicities. You know, it's good, it's really good. It's a um, good work environment. How have you had to change your management style, or your leadership style, if you will? Not greatly. I try to treat everyone exactly the same. We try to involve everyone at all levels, doing everything. The language is the biggest problem, obviously. If someone's struggling with their English, that's where we have to work really hard to get over. But as far as the job goes, there's no real special treatment to anyone in particular. Yeah. So what do you do to, to help out with that situation? Often here, when they're dealing with a customer, I'll, I'll just I'll tell them to, really look your customer in the eye, speak slowly and, and gesture to, you know, if it's lettuce, tomato, cucumbers, do yeah. this. And 90% and of your customers will be very understanding. And the more a newcomer will, will do that, the better, better they will get. So you've made an investment in people and that'll be right across the board. So tell us a little bit about you know, people who have been here for a very long time. There's three here today that have been here for four years, I would think, and they're all still on, on working visas. I've helped three through to residency. Um, where I can. Often they're, um, they're nurses and yeah. you know all sorts of higher qualifications overseas but a lot of them aren't recognised here so um, you know, they, they, have to, they have to work so then they start here and then, then gradually try and qualify themselves into their chosen occupation. Well, like everyone I've had really I, I would say would be great residents in New Zealand. So what would be your advice for other business owners who maybe are realising that they really have to diversify their workforce into newcomers, into migrant labour, you know, obviously you've been successful, what tips would you pass on to them? I think I think it's really good for um, for the community of, of your workforce to have, have a good mix of everyone, it makes everyone more understanding, more tolerant. I've got a girl from Romania, I mean most of us didn't even know where Romania was prior to her coming, so we're all, we're all learning, you know, um, even, even the Philippines we probably had a we had a you know, limited understanding of, of, of where they were. We've had Argent, an Argentinian lady uh, who worked here in the past. Um, so my manager's Romanian yeah. and um, assistant manager's um, Philippine and um, they've just moved into those roles. It's not because they're Romanian or Philippine, it's because they're, they're really good at their job. That's why, why they're in their roles they are today. So um, very hard working generally. As far as advice to, to anyone else, I, I would say just um, it's very easy when you get a lot of applicants for a job to go through and cross off the ones of the names you can't pronounce because you know there's going to be issues there. But, but then you often think, you know, am I am I letting the best applicant for the job go by? So, so it pays to look in a bit deeper than that. So look, things are going okay, but what's your plans for the future? How do you keep, you know, ahead of staffing and ahead of any challenges that may may occur? Being 
a 24-7, well not 24-7, but you know, pretty much um, every day of the year except Christmas, um, business, um, it's very hard to do um, social functions, at, you know, which, which I would like to do a lot more of to, to include everybody. I think I will try to have more sort of like, you know, picnic-y barbecue type things where you can come and bring your kids. Thanks Tony for those insights. Look, just while we're here, I couldn't have a look at the back and just see what goes on, because it can't be that difficult to make a sandwich. <laughs> Certainly, you can have a look at the back and we'll, okay. just, we'll see how good you are at making a sandwich. All right. Hey, Tony, this is, this is the kitchen area. Hey. So they've just won that platter on the radio today. Ooh, yeah, it's good, doesn't oh, it? You got the smell cam on that. <laughs> this is just for our enjoyment more than yours, Tony. I, I suspect that is yeah. the case. And probably one of these is better than, than a... Um, Oops. Welcome to Subway, sir. I think you very much, yes. Yeah. Then what would you like today? I'm getting a six inch Italian by the look of it. You are indeed. Yes, I am. You are um, indeed. Could I have, um, please, meatballs? Meatballs? And it has to be very prescribed like that. Four meatballs on that side over there. Smoke. Two, two slices. I could be. That sounds right. You done anything special, different? No. <laughs> yeah, I'll just have a wee bit of onion and some carrot, please. A little bit of onion and some carrot. A wee sticky to hold it together. That is, that is, that is inspired. One of those. That, that is free. Um, oh, you take that away and enjoy it. Oh, thank you so much. All the best. Not bad, was it, for his first time? <laughs> <laughs>